Today we are going to learn how to achieve balance. Not really, class, not that type of balance. Let's go back and see what we have. Welcome. Today we are going to learn about these two balances. Just like any balances, there are proper procedures that need to be followed when these are being used. And just like anything in life where there's always a time and a place, today we are going to learn about the time and the place of when to use these two balances. Thank you. First, let's look at the top loading balance. It's a balance used that is accurate to the nearest one-tenth of a gram. It is used in honors and CP level classes as well as at the AP level. It's a good purpose general balance valued at about $250. The other balance we are going to talk about today is what's called the analytical balance. It will measure weights to the nearest ten thousandth of a gram. It is very accurate, it is very sensitive, and it is very expensive. Its price tag is two thousand dollars. Remember, you break it, you buy it. Okay, this balance right here is a top loading balance and as you can see it will measure to the nearest tenth of a gram and it will measure up to a 600 gram limit. As with any piece of equipment or instrument there you need to be familiar with the buttons on it. There is an on off switch and there is also a print unit button which we will not be using however this switch will be very important as it also is the on off switch as well as the zero switch so for instance if you would want to zero it which you always want to do before you start to measure you would hit the zero button and it would reset for instance if we had something on here we could re-zero it and we would tear out the weight which is what that procedure is called tearing out so that whatever we would put into the boat then would be weighed only what we have added from this point uh, of which we will do an example in a very short time frame okay this balance is an analytical balance it is glass all the way around it has glass doors the glass doors are opened to insert stuff into the balance and then they are closed prior to measurement. Then you would record the measurement once the instrument has stabilized. You can also see that there's a balance bubble. The circle needs to be in the middle of that printed circle as this instrument is so sensitive it will actually measure the fingerprint. So you have to make sure your hands are clean and not very greasy before using this instrument. And it basically works the same way. If you don't close the doors, this instrument is so sensitive, it will actually measure the air blowing across the balance, as you can see by the weight constantly changing. As you can see here, as we look at the stuff laid out, we have a chemical, a bottle of copper sulfate, a typical chemical that is used in all levels of the chemical laboratory, a small weighing boat, a medium, no, let's start off, let's start all over. Okay. 
As we come back, we also notice several pieces of equipment. And just as in Goldilocks and the Three Bears, we have a small, a medium, and a large, or not very comfortable, a little comfortable, very comfortable. However, we will be using all three, and you have to decide which one to use before you go back into the lab and measure, because as you can see, each one holds a different amount, a different quantity. And so if we are measuring large amounts, we would use the large boat, and if we are measuring very small amounts, such as what's being used with the analytical balance, we would use the smaller boat. These two pieces of equipment here are called scupolas. One is a scupola, one is a little bit more of a spatula, a micro scupola, what gives you a little bit more control as to the amount of chemicals. You will see both demonstrated here today. We are now going to witness how to measure out exactly 1.0 grams of a chemical substance. The chemical substance we're going to measure out today is copper sulfate. We come back to the balance, we put our weighing boat on the balance, we never put the chemical on the balance, we put the weighing boat on the balance. We hit the zero button and we see that the balance zeroes out. And so we take the chemical and we take the lid off and we hold it in our left hand if we are right-handed and we use the scupola and we stick that in there and we put a little bit of chemical on the end of it and we let it fall into the weighing boat. And you can see that first initial sampling was 0.7 grams. We never put chemicals on the top without a weighing boat. So now I know that I have to weigh a little bit more so I'm going to put a little bit on the scupola and then I'm going to tap my hand as it falls off gradually till I get the balance to read 1.00. Now holding the scupola over the boat, I put it back in, put the lid back on, and you can see that I have measured out exactly 1.0 grams. Okay, what we're now are going to witness is how to use an analytical balance. Uh, this balance will only be used at the AP level. So for students at the CP honors level, um, you will not be using this balance. However, at the AP level, we will be using it in almost every single lab that we have to do where we need a measurement of mass due to the fact that it allows us four significant figures after the decimal. It measures to the nearest one ten thousandth of a gram, which is about as accurate as you can get uh, in a general laboratory setting. You will see these balances at the collegiate level uh, in freshman, sophomore, junior, and even senior level classes. Most typical colleges have a balance room that is uh, has a positive airflow pressure uh, and the balances are all lined up uh, usually on rubber padding so that vibrations from the building itself doesn't uh, disrupt the, the measurements um, and that room is usually only accessible to people uh, with a pass, a key, or access from the, the laboratory that they're in conducting the experiment. So today you're going to witness me measuring out exactly 0.1 grams of copper sulfate. I will not be using the scupola, I will be using the micro spatula today. Um, also, you will, as you watch this, look at how the equipment, the doors, the hands are being used to measure this very, very small amount. Okay, as we look at the balance, we can see that it is on, the doors are closed, and it's been set, it's been teared to zero, zero, zero. I open the one door and I put my weighing boat in, and I can see that it has a weight. Now, I really don't want to know the weight of the boat, nor do I care. All I really do worry about is that I need to measure exactly 0 0.100, or as close to that as possible, uh, weight-wise of copper sulfate. I hit the zero button, and so now I open my doors so that I can work from both sides. I take my chemical, and I take the lid off, and I put my scupola in here, 
Let me see if I can open. Let's see if that. Okay, you can see I'm holding the spatula in one hand, the chemical in my other. I put just a small amount, because remember, 0.1 grams is not very much. Put a little bit on my balance here, and I tap my hand so that some of the chemical falls off and onto the weighing plate or the weighing boat. Okay, I'm still light. And now this is not a fast procedure. This does take time. You have to take your time. And now I have overshot by quite a bit. So now I have to take some off. And so now to do this, this is where the flat end of the spatula. I'm going to lift the boat up and try to get some of the chemical on this spatula, but the whole time I'm keeping the spatula over the balance so that no chemicals get anywhere else but in the container where they belong or on the weighing boat. way over. And that, and that technique is used. Um, you have to put a little bit on at a time, and as you take it off, you have to always remember to keep the spatula over the weighing boat and the container of the chemical as close as possible also, and you always transfer over the chemical, over the weighing boat, whether it's the chemical going in or going out of the container. That way if anything does fall, it would fall into the boat, not onto the balance. I'd like to thank you for your time and as we go throughout the school year, uh, you will be using uh, these two pieces of equipment um, throughout the entire year. So.